Hello everyone, welcome to the course Tourism Policy Planning and Development. In this course, we are going to use the book of Real Cruise entitled Tourism Planning and Development. Our first lesson is about the basic concepts in tourism planning and development. These are the learning objectives in this chapter. After completing this lesson, you are expected to define tourism policy tourism planning, and tourism product development and explain their relationship. You are also expected to explain the dimensions of tourism planning in terms of levels, timeframes, scopes, and spatial units. Also, you are to describe tourism's special characteristics as a product and their implications on planning, explain the benefits of planning, and identify the prerequisites for effective tourism plans and product development. So now let us define tourism policy, tourism planning, and tourism product development. Tourism policy is defined as a set of rules, regulations, guidelines, directives, and development or promotion objectives and strategies that provide framework within which the collective as well as individual decisions directly affecting long-term tourism development and the daily activities within a destination are taken. Tourism policy is very important in a destination because fulfilling the requirements of tourism policy will minimize tourism's negative impacts and reap the rewards which are the primary goals of tourism planning. So what is tourism planning? Tourism planning is the process of considering the needs of people planning a trip and using those factors to determine the best resources programs, and activities for their trip. Tourism planning is intended for local residents and businesses of the location, as well as tourists who travel there. Tourism planning is also the process of conducting situation analysis, wherein you need to gather and evaluate the information to identify and prioritize current tourism development issues. You are also need to set your vision, goals, and objectives where you need to imagine a desired future state of tourism in the destination. And lastly, it is about a formulation of the strategies, wherein you need to choose from a different number of alternatives for achieving your goals. So now we are going to define vision, goals, objectives, strategies, action or implementation plan. The vision is a desired future state of the destination. An example of this is the Philippine National Tourism Development Plan 2016 to 2022, which envisions to develop a globally competitive, environmentally sustainable, and socially responsible tourism industry that promotes inclusive growth through employment generation and equitable distribution of income thereby contributing to the building a foundation for a high trust society. So after setting your vision, you need also to identify your goals and objectives. Goals are broad-based targets for tourism, which are qualitatively stated, while objectives are the smart targets, which are quantitatively stated. The difference between goals and objectives is that objectives are more on specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound targets. An example of a goal is to enhance national and regional economies, and to achieve this goal, your objective is to gain foreign currency by marketing tourism to key foreign markets. So after setting your goals and objectives, of course, you need to set also your strategies. So strategies are broad statement of methods by which objectives will be achieved. And to achieve your strategies, you need also to have your action or implementation plan. Um, it is about the details of how the strategies will be implemented. So an example of the strategy in the National Tourism Development Plan of the Philippines is to intensify transport infrastructure development. Its action plan is to expand capacity and modernize facilities, equipment and operations, and maintenance of existing gateways. 
So now we are going to discuss about tourism planning dimensions. So uh, tourism planning can be in different forms. This could be uh, by different levels, different time frame, scope, and spatial units. So for levels, um, it could be different based on the geographic setting. For the time frame, it will be different in the amount of time for implementation. And for the scope, it will be different um, by functional areas. And for spatial units, it will be different based on the space covered of the plant. So the first one is the levels. Tourism planning can be done on different levels. The first one here is international level. So at the international level, tourism planning typically involves international transportation services, the movement and scheduling of the tours among different countries, the development of major tourist attractions and facilities in neighboring countries, and the working strategies and promotional programs of many nations. The next level is the national level wherein it is concerned with tourism policy infrastructure facilities, and a physical structure plan, which includes essential tourist attractions, selected tourism development regions, international entry points, facilities, and services. It is also concerned with the amount, kinds, and quality of accommodation and other required tourist facilities and services, the important tour routes in the country, and their regional connections, tourism organizational entities, loss and investment policies, tourism marketing strategies and promotion, education and training programs in environmental, economic, and sociocultural analysis. Next is the regional level. It is for one region of a country, often a state, or the province, or perhaps an island group, and formulated within the framework of the National Tourism Policy and Plan. Next is the provincial level, which is more specific planning than the regional level but not as detailed as city or municipal planning or site level planning. The municipal or city level, it is a plan involving a whole city or municipality, while the site planning is precise planning for individual buildings or complexes or of a structure such as hotel, commercial centers, and visitor facilities. So for the time frame of tourism planning, it will depend on the type of development to be implemented. It can be a short term, which is two years or less, medium term, two to five years, or long term, which is more than five years. So the Philippine National Tourism Development Plan 2016 to 2022 is actually an example of a long-term tourism development plan. Next is scope. A tourism plan may be comprehensive in scope or focused on one or just a few aspects of tourism planning. A comprehensive tourism plan is also known as the master plan. The master plan consists of a physical plan, which includes a structure plan and a transportation infrastructure plan, environmental management plan, conservation management plan, entrepreneurship development plan, institutional framework plan, human resource development plan, marketing plan, and investment promotion plan. So next is the spatial units, which include tourist site, tourist development area, tourism cluster, tourism circuit, and tourism corridor. So a tourist site is an area that contains one or more tourist attractions. So an example of this is the Barangay Apokon of Tagum City, which has two attractions uh, that are the e-park or the energy park and the new city hall of Tagum. So next is the tourist attraction. Um, it is actually defined as a physical or cultural feature of a particular place that individual travelers or tourists perceive as capable of meeting one or more of their specific leisure-related needs or positive or favorable attributes of an area for a given activity 
or a set of activities as desired by a given customer or market, including climate, scenery, activities, and culture. It is also defined as any objective, person, place, or concept that draws people either geographically or through remote electronic means so that they might have an experience. The experience can be recreational, spiritual, or otherwise. So these are some of the categories of attraction. We have the geophysical landscape aesthetic, in which an example of these are mountains, volcanoes, and beaches. We can also have the ecological biological attraction, which may involve those wildlife animals or those that are living in the forest. Uh, we also have the cultural historical attractions, which features the traditions, the heritage of the destination, and the culture of the people. And lastly, uh, it can be in a form of recreational attraction, such as sports and casinos. Next is the tourism development area. So it is an area designated for possessing an important site or groups of tourist sites. It could be any town or city that has one or more tourist sites. So an example of this are a single town or city with several important tourist sites such as Baguio. In Baguio City, we can see different tourist uh, sites. We have there the Strawberry Farm the Burnham Park, and the Mines View Park. Another example of a TDA with more than one town or city is we have the Vegan Lawag, which is in Region 1 or in the Ilocos Norte and Ilocos Sur. Next is we have the Tourism Cluster. So Tourism Cluster is composed of two or more TDAs. An example of this is the cluster with TDAs in several provinces, like in Central Visayas Tourism Cluster, like the Northern Cebu, Bantayan, Malapascua, Metro Cebu, Mactan, Olango Island, Southern Cebu, uh, Negros Oriental, Dumaguete, Siquijor, and Tagbilaran, Panglao Island. So, cluster composed of TDAs in a single province is we have the Palawan. Next is tourism circuit. So, it is a route involving at least three major tourist destinations which are located in different towns, villages, or cities. Uh, destinations with common characteristics are themes. Examples. We have the gastronomic tourism circuit like Pampanga, Bicol, and Iloilo. And we also have the surfing tourism circuit like La Union, Balur, and Caicoan in Eastern Samar. Next is we have the tourism corridor. It is a route defined by a theme spanning several countries or even continents. An example of this is the Silk Road Heritage Corridor, which spans in several countries in Asia, Europe, and Africa. Also, we have the Inca Corridor, which spans in Chile, Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador, and Argentina and Colombia. Next is we have the tourism destination, which is a tourism development unit regardless of the area, number, and levels of political units involved. So here you can see the listing of Philippine tourism clusters. So for Mindanao, we have Surigao Dinagat Island, Agusan River Basin, Cagayan de Oro Coast and Hinterland, Zamboanga Peninsula, Davao Gulf and Coast, Cotabato Sarangani, and the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. So now you can see a conceptual model of attraction site, tourism development area, tourist cluster, and tourism circuit. So all the triangles that you see here are examples of tourist attractions. While all the circles that you see here are examples of tourist sites and these items here in rectangles and squares are examples of tourism development area 
and this one is the tourist cluster and lastly we have here the tourism circuit so again a tourist cluster is an area that consists one or more tourism development area and the tda is an area which consists of one or more tourist sites and a tourist site is an area that consists of one or more tourist attractions and the tourism circuit is a group of destinations which shares common interests or theme so now we are going to discuss about the tourism characteristics and planning implications so the first one is tourism is a composite product and is comprised of goods and services that are provided by entities in the tourism value chain. Thus, one of the rationales for tourism planning is to identify, organize, and integrate entities along the tourism value chain to ensure the delivery of consistency and high quality tourist experiences. Next is tourist destinations are intangible. So, and as a tourism planner, you should incorporate strategies for managing expectations and maximizing visitor satisfaction. Next is tourism destinations have long gestation periods. The tourism plan must cover the long-term horizon and tourism entities should give it their enduring commitment. Moreover, tourism is very capital intensive. Your plan must be able to present realistic estimates of the financial requirements and uh, feasibility studies can actually help potential investors to firm up their decisions on whether to venture or not. Next is nature and culture are tourism's main assets. While it is true that they are free, they are also finite meaning we should not abuse our resources. Next is tourism is subject to external forces that are basically uncontrollable. Tourism exerts impacts on the environment, culture, and economy of destinations, so planners must help avoid undesirable changes by drawing up precautionary measures at the earliest stage of tourism development. Furthermore, Tourism is a highly dynamic and competitive industry, so planners must devise competitive strategies and collaboration strategies at the same time. And lastly, planners should not devise stakeholders such as the local community, tourism association, donor agencies, government offices, indigenous people, and already existing tourism businesses. So now we will be talking about the benefits of tourism planning. So planning forces us to focus on the task at hand and to think critically. Planning also prevents waste of time, money, and effort. Uh, planning helps avoid mistakes that can lead to irreparable change to destinations. And lastly, participatory tourism planning also contributes to the development of social capital by building trust and support among the various stakeholders in a destination. So now these are the factors for effective tourism planning and development. We have availability of tourism re relevant data availability of tourism planning expertise, type and variety of tourism resources, culture of the destination residents, geographic location and spatial distribution of tourism development units, target markets, stage in tourism area life cycle, tourism development paradigm, national tourism policy and legislation, perceptions and attitudes of stakeholders, awareness of external forces, and financial capital requirement. So now we will be discussing them one by one. The first one that we have is availability and quality of tourism relevant data. It actually affects the level of accuracy of estimating supply capacity, forecasting demand and monitoring outcomes. The next one is the caliber of planning expertise. It determines the quality of planning outputs. So expertise can only be built over long years of education and professional experience. 
Next is the type and variety of tourism resources, which limit options for tourism product development. So destinations can capitalize on unique cultural and or natural assets by developing tourism products around them. Next is the kind of tourism resources in adjacent destinations. So it has implications on competitive strategies. According to De Leon Jr., this is how destinations may compete. Um, they should have originality, indigenousness, authenticity, uniqueness, historicity, magnitude, and excellence. For originality, it refers to being the first to have a particular attraction. An example of this is the Disneyland in California. California is actually the first to have the Disneyland. So for those who would like to go to the first and original Disneyland around the world, they must go to California. Next is indigenousness. For indigenousness, um, it has something that can only be found in your destination. So an example of this is the Tamarau or the Mindoro Dwarf Buffalo, which can only be found in Mindoro, Philippines. Next is we have authenticity. So it refers to being true to traditions and methods of preparation and not contrived. An example of this is Wang Od Ugay, or also known as Maria Ugay, who is a Filipino tattoo artist from Buscalan, Tinglayan, Kalinga, Philippines. So she is often described as the last and oldest Mamba Bato, which is a traditional Kalinga tattooist. And she is part of the Butbut people of the larger Kalinga ethnic group. Next is we have uniqueness. So here, as you can see in the presentation, we have the sand dunes are uh, unique in Ilocos Norte. Next is historicity, which is the being significant for a particular event. So Intramuros is an example of this. Next is we have magnitude. So Mount Apo is an example of this as Mount Apo is the highest point in the Philippines. Next is excellence. Excellence is having the best quality. So for example, we have the Boracay Island. So Boracay Island is actually recognized as one of the best uh, tourist destinations in the world. All right, so next we have the culture of destination residence, which impacts the kind of tourists attracted to it. Next is geographical location and spatial distribution of tourism development units where location has different direct impacts on climate, security, vulnerability to natural disasters, and infrastructure requirements. Climate affects the seasonality of tourism, the range of activities that can be offered to the tourists, the kinds of foods available, and the types of buildings that can be constructed. Location also affects real and perceived security, and the spatial distribution affects cost of travel, duration of tours, and cost of providing utilities and public services. So for example, um, we have different perceptions of destinations that are located in Mindanao for security reasons because they believe that Mindanao is prone to terrorism, unlike in other destinations around the Philippines. Okay, so next is we have the target markets, which influence the kind of amenities and services that are offered in the destination. Next is the stage in the TALC or Tourism Area Life Cycle. It has an effect on the prevailing attitudes of residents to tourists and development strategies. According to DOCSI Iridex model or the Irritation Index model, um, it suggests that residents' attitudes towards tourism deteriorate from euphoria in the introduction stage to apathy in the growth stage, irritation in the maturity stage, and antagonism in the decline stage of tourism development. So this is an illustration of Butler's tourism area life cycle model. 
which undergoes uh, the different stages. The first stage that we have is the exploration wherein the area remains unspoiled and tourist facilities are minimal. So this time, the area attracts few visitors. The next stage that we have is involvement, wherein additional facilities are provided by locals and small businesses. So a tourist season will start to be recognized. Next is we have the development. So here, the area is now acknowledged as a tourist destination, so the host country may start to actively advertise and develop the area. Next one is we have the consolidation, wherein the area retains its visitor numbers, although increases in tourists may not be as rapid as before, tensions may develop between the locals and the tourists. Next is we have stagnation. So stagnation, in here the resort may show a decline in facilities and therefore a decline in tourist numbers. This is often down to facilities becoming outdated and run down and receiving little maintenance. So if the resort will not uh, find ways to develop, redevelop or redesign the destination, it may result to the decline. So decline here is when the area will continue to decline, the tourism industry will decrease, resulting in job losses, and the overall image of the destination will be negatively impacted. So to avoid decline of the destination, tourism planning is very important. So if we are going to implement tourism planning, uh, we, have, we can have the stage of rejuvenation. So rejuvenation is the area may receive funding or invest in itself in order to rejuvenate and gain back its image. So in here, visitor numbers may start to increase again. So next we have the tourism development paradigm. It defines the choice of issues, goals, and strategies of tourism development. An example of this is the pro poor tourism paradigm which poverty alleviation is the focal mission of tourism development. Next one is national tourism policy and legislation, which set parameters to what can and cannot be done and priority areas for tourism development. So these are the features of Philippine Tourism Policy or RA9593, also known as Tourism Act of 2009. Nationalist orientation, sustainable tourism development, Ecologically sustainable, responsible, participative, culturally sensitive, economically viable, and ethically and socially equitable for local communities, international target markets, tourism product diversification, and product sector participation and focus on agritourism. So next is the perceptions and attitudes of stakeholders, which are also very important because it affects the degree of support the stakeholders give to tourism development. Without their support, uh, the tourism planning and development will not be successful. Next is awareness of external forces, which affects the viability of planned tourism projects and covers social, cultural, technological, environmental, economic, and political dimensions. So these are some external developments which could impact tourism. We have trend toward instant gratification, health and fitness consciousness, aging population in the source markets, the rise of China, India, and Russia in the world economy, the convergence of technology, broader access to internet, and the growing use of social media, climate change, global warming, deforestation, and species extinction, passage of pro-tourism laws, and the general agreement on trade in services, or the GATS. And the last one that we have here is, is the financial capital requirement. So, it should be the major consideration in whether or not to proceed with tourism development. So the financial capital requirement may be in the form of loans, grants, appropriation from government, private sector investment, NGOs donations, individual philanthropy, or public-private sector partnership. 
So, of course, without money, we cannot implement anything. All right. So, that ends our lesson for the basic concepts of tourism planning and development. So, for questions and clarifications, please do not hesitate to ask me questions during our virtual class meeting. Thank you and have a nice day. See you soon.